Scotty Nell Hughes is a Trump supporter and chief political correspondent for USA Net Radio Network. She's with me here in New York, and I also want to bring in our CBS News senior political editor, Steve Chigaris. He is in Washington, and not to be left out, Matt Makoviak. He is a Republican strategist and the founder of the President of Potomac Strategy Group. He is in Austin. Thank you, all of you, for joining us here tonight. Looking forward sure. to getting this discussion off and going. Scotty, come on. He had to make two statements to clarify his response. How do you backtrack from this? Well, if it's backtracking, it's a very sticky situation. Abortion has always been a very emotional issue, a very complicated issue in this. And you're either, it's not a simple, are you pro-life or are you pro-choice anymore? And we have to realize this was a hypothetical question that Chris Matthews asked in the first place, that it had lots of it where there was no details, there was no, it's just. Okay, but it was hypothetical, but he said women should be held responsible, should be punished. And you know what? He actually, at the, the next statement, he came out and actually clarified his statement. I mean, he is not a politician. He has not been coached. He is not someone that has gone through and literally had people telling him exactly what to say or reading from a cue card as some of these other politicians. The good news is, is that he admits when he does a mistake and clarifies it, what she did in his statement. The bad news is you're not going to get this political rhetoric or these coach statements that you get that sound perfect, that make perfect little sound bites, but in the end, the guys turn on them anyways once they're elected into office. But when you are running for president and you win the office of the presidency, you are expected to be perfect. That is, you're dealing with world leaders, you're dealing with world issues, and you're also dealing with domestic important issues like abortion. That's a very much, but I think like once again, this is a hypothetical situation. Is Roe versus Wade actually Actually, ever going to be reversed in the United States? I don't think so. This is a very complicated issue when Mr. Trump was sitting here and talking about his whole goal is to return the rights to the states, the power to the states. As he said in his statement, he maybe should have gone into that a little bit more detail in his conversation with Chris Matthews. But in this comment, he clarified it. And you know what? Like I said, he could have phrased it better. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you on that. But ultimately, he is 100% pro life since 1999. He has faced a lot of criticism because he said that Planned Parenthood does good good things and they provide good services so the pro-life movement have come after him because he said something was positive about Planned Parenthood if you don't realize this is not a complete ambush from both sides from all sides on Donald Trump he cannot make anybody happy at this point regardless of what he says he is going to make somebody upset all right Matt I want to hear your point on this please weigh in yeah, I think the problem here is that Donald Trump said something that no pro-life leader has ever said. In fact, when the uh, GOP-controlled House of Representatives passed a late-term abortion ban, a 20-week abortion ban, they specifically prohibited punishing women seeking abortions. And 238 House Republicans voted for that. So if Donald Trump had the first understanding at all about the pro-life movement, he would know that what he said has never, ever been part of the pro-life movement. And it's done real damage to the pro-life movement. That's why you've seen pro-life leaders like Penny Nance and Marjorie Dannenfelser and a number of others come forward and criticize what Trump has said. Look, what he said with Chris Matthews is what's going to be reported. The statements that went out later are going to get much less attention. This is damage uh, to the pro-life movement, but it's also damaging, I think, to Donald Trump with women. We know he has a negative 70 net favorability rating, uh, 70 under unfavorable rating with women right now in the general election. That number is only going to get worse. He's going to be the, the worst general election candidate we've seen with women uh, in my lifetime, and this, this latest controversy is only going to further that. I want to get to a statement that was actually issued um, by the um, pro-life group, and it is basically saying no pro-lifer would ever want to punish a woman who has chosen abortion. This is against the very nature of what we are about. We invite a woman who has gone down this route to consider paths to healing, not punishment. I just wanted to throw that out there and get that on the record. Steve Chigaris, um, let's talk about how we... Um, we get back from this. I mean, Donald Trump says this, and within a two-hour time frame, he comes out and he has to correct himself twice. How do you recover from something like this? Well, I just want to point out, we tend to, I mean, we and sort of the, the folks who follow politics and cover uh, all this stuff get hung up in the, in the nitty-gritty details of what was said, what was cleaned up. Uh, and we can continue to do that, but let's just look at the bigger issues here for Trump. Okay, so first of all, he said something that not only upset um, uh, those who are pro-abortion rights, but he upset the anti-abortion people as well, which is not easy to do. Uh, I mean, he's got everybody—he's got everybody on all sides upset about this statement. So. 
the fact that he is uh, he has upset people who should be behind him, uh, the anti-abortion folks, uh, that is going to that is a mess that he needs to worry about in the short term uh, to, in cleaning up that mess. Secondly, uh, what we've seen uh, with the things that he has said uh, that have caused controversy, whether it's this issue, whether it's torture, whether it's Muslim ban, whether it's we, we got a laundry list of these things. Uh, there is a, a significant number of Republican. There are a significant number of Republicans who like Trump for saying these kinds of things. They don't mind the fact that he says these things inartfully. They don't mind the fact that he is not 100% uh, an expert on all these issues. However, as we move along in this race, you have a growing number of Republicans who, grow, who are growing uncomfortable uh, with the amount of times that he has, uh, to, to put it bluntly, stepped in it. Uh, the amount of times he has to c continue to clean up these messes and wo worry about what that would mean if he's the nominee and what it would mean to uh, other, ra other Republicans who are running uh, this fall. Then, of course, you also have what happens if he is the nominee and he's running against uh, a, a Democratic uh, candidate who will be hammering him on issues such as this and other things that he has said that have been highly controversial, whether it's about women's issues, he has trouble, obviously, with, uh, with uh, women voters, uh, but in generally, in terms of things that he said that have alienated uh, others, independents and Democrats. How does he get past all of this stuff in a general election? It's not just this specific issue. It is a laundry list of things that he has said that he's going to have to try to correct if he's the nominee of the Republican Party. So, Scotty, as Steve just um, outlined there, this is not Mr. Trump's first time having to backtrack and make a correction or saying, you know what, that's not what I meant. It may be what I said, but it's not what I meant. Don't you feel as though that at this point he needs to maybe show some more restraint, be more disciplined with his words? Well, this was an open hall town hall for him, so it's hard to, you know, he just spoke on cuff. That's part of this whole thing. But, you know, it's interesting. You talk about walking back. There's a difference between walking back and clarifying. So however you want, whatever category you want to look at it. But, you know, your first guest started off by saying this has done so much damage to the pro-life movement. No. You know what's done damage to the pro-life movement? Sitting senators, Republicans in the House and the Senate who passed this budget that continued to fund Planned Parenthood and did not stand up for it. That has done more damage to the pro-life movement. A politician who's running for office like Carly did, getting on a national stage and telling a lie about a video about Planned Parenthood, that did damage to the pro-life movement. So this is not the first gaffe that's happened. That sort of just shows how definitely how, how temperamental this, this subject is right now in the mm -hmm. current status. And you're right. You have to be, you have to have your T's crossed and your I's dotted absolutely perfect. And you know what? Hopefully going forward, he'll realize he'll get this answer down perfectly at the same time, we don't want to make him a politician. We want to make him still be the people. He is not perfect. And uh, I think clarification, immediately realizing once he got off air and clarifying his statement, having a chance to clarify it, I think that actually might speak to people that he at least he knows that he's not going to continue down a path when people are sitting here and misconstruing everything he has said. Man, don't you think that the Republicans need a pretty perfect candidate, though, to win this election? I don't know if I'd say that. I think Hillary's a much weaker general election candidate uh, than Democrats think she is. If you just look at the, uh, the dishonesty and, and, and untrustworthiness numbers, two-thirds of the public think she's not honest or trustworthy. Uh, but look, we can't have a, a loose cannon candidate that doesn't know what he's talking about and continues to put his foot in his mouth. I mean, I'm glad the campaign uh, walked back his statements and clarified them. And it's, it's not a clarification, Scotty, when, when they completely change what he said and, uh, and basically invalidate what he said. So, in, in, as to your comment about the pro-life movement, I, I would disagree with that. Um, you know, the fact that pro-life organizations have come out and criticized what he said right away shows that they thought damage was being done to the pro-life movement. So, I, I was disappointed to hear you use some of the talking points Planned Parenthood has used over the past what, few you months. Don't, you don't think there wasn't damage done when you had Carly's comment? I mean, we were actually on the track to take the plan funding, to defund taxpayer-funded abortions out of the budget until those statements were made and the brouhaha over those videos and some of the possible fake elements of those videos that she brought out, she personally, without validating it. That did damage. That actually cost lives. If you're truly a pro-life, pro we had the best chance at that point of defunding taxpayer funded abortions and it completely blew up in the in the face of all those politicians including Senator Cruz including Marco Rubio all of those folks none of them were even afraid were afraid to touch it after that whole situation happened that did damage this right here at least is just words it's no actions actions do speak louder than words in this election Steve what are Republicans in Washington right now thinking I mean because right now Mr. Trump is still leading this race 
Well, there's a couple of things we're looking at. First of all, is uh, we're going to see if this has any effect on the next uh, primary that's coming up next Tuesday in Wisconsin. Uh, there was a new poll out today that showed him down 10 points to Ted Cruz. Uh, we'll see if this has any effect on that. And secondly, again, this, as I mentioned earlier, it plays into this sense among uh, the establishment uh, Republicans and anti-Trump Republicans that. Uh, as Matt said, he's a loose cannon. And uh, do they want somebody uh, who they can't really predict where he's going next? Uh, is he going to break with Republican orthodoxy on, on issues uh, and then later clean it up or stay with breaking re with Republican orthodoxy on things? Where is he going? Who is he going to, what's the next controversy that he's going to create? And how will that affect not only the Republicans' chances on the presidential line in November, if he's the nominee, but how will it affect all the other candidates? How will it affect their control of the Senate? How will it affect their control of the House? These are questions that, that a lot of folks in Washington are wrestling with. And the more you have these kinds of uh, uh, controversies that pop up surrounding Trump, the more Republicans get worried uh, about uh, their prospects in November. And Scotty, I mean, how many, how many more times are supporters going to allow this to happen and then forgive? And then allow another misstatement, you know, to be put out there. And then he has to clarify another statement, and then they forgive. I mean, how many chances can one candidate have during one election cycle? Well, because we're looking at the top two issues have nothing to do with these these issues that we're talking about today. Top two issues why people are supporting Mr. Trump is because they think he's telling the truth and they have trust in him in regards to our economy and national security. As much as I am a huge pro-lifer, I love the movement. That means that is only secondary to the top two issues why people are attracted to Mr. Trump. And when you're looking at politicians today, you can have the same old lawyer, debate trained elected politician that has caused us been a part of the problem of $19 trillion in debt and all of the issues we have today, or maybe we challenge the status quo, which is what Mr. Trump has done, and go another route, and at least, if anything, try to shake things up and bring people back to bring D.C. back to the idea of what most people on Main Street are having to face. Well, um, you know, a lot of um, women are surely concerned about this issue. And Absolutely. That is, that is, a, that is a, a category that Mr. Trump needs to face. Absolutely. All right, Scotty, we appreciate Scotty Nell Hughes, Steve Shigaris, and also Matt McCovic. Appreciate all of you joining us here this evening. Thanks.